Hey everyone, Sean Burrows with Team Federal. Today, I wanted to talk about a few questions I've received on social media, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook about recoil control in relation to shooting a semi-automatic pistol. I have a few minutes out here at the range before my next session starts, so I figured I'd take the time to address as much of these questions as I can in one video. Now, when it comes to new shooters, one of the main reasons they want to manage or control recoil is out of sheer comfort. If you don't have a good, solid foundation, if you don't have your fundamentals dialed in, shooting a gun, even the smaller calibers, can be very uncomfortable. If it hurts every time you shoot, you're not going to want to shoot very much, and uh, you're going to move on to other things. And nobody wants to see you out playing golf when you should be at the range in very close relation to comfort is safety. If you cannot control the firearm you're discharging, uh, bad things can happen. And then of course, the reason why I'm getting so many questions about recoil control is performance. How do I get back on target faster? Managing recoil doesn't matter if you're just firing one shot. Just let the gun recoil. Either you hit the target or you didn't. Keeping recoil under wraps is about getting back on target and getting that second shot off quicker than you otherwise were able to. That's why I get asked all the time, how do you shoot a plastic gun so flat? You must be using dumbed down powder puff ammunition for competition. I, I, I use factory ammo. I, I don't have time to reload. I don't reload. So let's get to it. First of all, the phrase recoil control is a bit of a misnomer. You can't control it. The best thing you can do is mitigate and manage it. There's no way you're going to be able to stop an explosion that you're holding arm's length from your face from having some sort of force back in your direction. The real question is, what are you going to do about it? There are three things that I've kind of pulled together and amassed from taking lessons from Andy Peterson, Keith Garcia, Ron Avery, and a bunch of other YouTube videos that I've caught online from Jerry Michalik and Bob Vogel. And sort of have made work for me. So this is my approach. This is how I use my body with my guns to manage recoil. These three things, and in this order, are stance, grip, and posture. How you stand has a lot to do with how you can get consistent, accurate shots in an efficient manner. So when I'm meeting with a new student, the way I describe the stance is you stand just like you do for every single sport, whether it's wrestling or golf or basketball, it's the same. Knees slightly bent, feet shoulder width apart, with a slight forward bias, ready to go into action, right? It's just the action stance. Some modifications that I make, though, are since I'm right-eye dominant, I will move my left foot forward about half a foot length in order to rotate the left side of my body slightly more towards my right eye. And then I will rotate my head so my right eye is closer to center. And with those two adjustments, I can get my sights aligned pretty quickly. Next, we have grip. No matter how you pick the gun up, whether you're pulling it from a duty holster, a competition holster, whether you carry appendix, small of back, you need to be able to grab the gun consistently every single time. A bad grab will lead to a bad grip, will lead to inconsistent shooting results. Uh, however you grab, wherever you draw the gun from, eventually your hands are gonna come together here. And from here on up, it's pretty much the same. I want to start when my hands come together at a very natural position. The position I describe it as is where you'd be if you were clapping. I like to have my support hand thumb pointed at the target already. And I like to have my trigger finger pointed at the target already. And I line those up. This pad under my thumb and this pad under my pointer finger, which are the main fulcrum points in which my hands come together on a pistol. So. Where do my hands land? This is where my draw is going to come together. I'm able to push the gun out with just extending my arms to where it's going to land in front of my face. And if you'll notice, I can bring the gun up to here and push it out, but that takes more distance than a diagonal angle. That's an efficiency of motion thing that allows me to get on target faster, acquire the front sight as I'm raising the gun up. Now, as far as grip placement goes, when I grab the gun from a holster with my dominant hand, I'm not holding it like a monkey holds a hammer. That's an analogy I got from Bob Vogel. You need to go watch his video on 
gun grip. So I'm going to engage the pinky and this back part of my thumb. My dominant thumb doesn't do anything in my grip, but I'm using the pinky to try to force my hand up into this undercut here in the grip. That way I know I'm as high as I can go on this gun as possible. Mechanically speaking, if I wanted to really keep my recoil under control, I just keep my hand on top while I'm shooting. Problem is, of course, that moves. If I'm holding the gun down here, this muzzle blast will act like a rocket and it will cause the gun to move in the path of least resistance. And you're gonna get muzzle flip. So the next best thing I can do is get my hands as high up on the gun as possible. That brings in the support hand. I do the reverse karate chop, put it right under the trigger guard and wrap my fingers around the front of the gun. Then I make sure my thumb is parallel with the frame. I am able to get the pad of my thumb right up here on this part of the gun. And then I have this part of my dominant hand touching on the same spot on the opposite side of the gun. That means if the gun were to recoil, it would spin right here. I'm creating that fulcrum. Again, I'm gonna have to let the gun recoil. There's no getting around it. I wanna shoot, we just need to be able to manage it. It might look like my left hand is touching the slide and it won't be able to move or it'd be very uncomfortable. But I have my left hand as high up on the gun as possible. This meat right here is touching right along the top of the frame. The gun is free to cycle. So tip of my thumb is touching right past the hinge of the slide release here. And so those are my contact indexes that I, I feel for when I'm grabbing this particular pistol. So that's the grip. And when I bring my hands together in this clapping position, the gun, is parallel to the ground and perpendicular to my target. So when I push it up, I can acquire that front sight and I'm already much closer to having my sights aligned and getting off a shot much sooner. It's very important that when your grip comes together here to make sure that there's no tension. Out here, it's a very different story. So what happens between here and there? Let's talk about it. Empty water bottle. I make my clapping grip, wrap my support hand fingers around the outside. I am using this portion as a hinge. My elbows become a nutcracker. And this, this right here is where all the pressure is applied. So relaxed, gripping the life out of it. Relaxed, gripping the life out of it. You need to make absolutely certain that there is no tension in your trigger finger you will not be able to get off consistent shots if you have a tense, uncontrolled trigger press. Doesn't matter how well you can line up the sights if you mess up that alignment with a bad trigger press. Pistol skills are the most perishable out of the three guns I use in three gun competition. So I will spend a majority of my time reminding myself of what this looks like and feels like, making sure I can align those sights and get proper grip tension. So when I'm on the clock and I'm under pressure, getting these dry fire reps in just right here has become the most valuable to me. I can't stress enough how important it is to not try to squeeze the gun with your hands. The only pressure should be with your fingers, creating that hinge. All the tension should come from your forearms, elbows out. So as you're creating that nutcracker tension, you can shoot a lot more rounds accurately and quickly for a lot longer than wearing out these smaller muscles. And for extra control when shooting polymer frame guns, I like to cock my support hand elbow up. So it looks like this. This would be a, a relaxed steel frame grip right here. And then this is what I'll be doing when I'm shooting polymer frame guns. So what's happening here? Why am I creating this pressure? A couple of things. One, my elbows aren't down, so I'm not creating a hinge for weird muzzle flip, right? I'm actually using this hand to hold the gun, take pressure off of this hand so it can do the finer motor skills that are necessary in order to execute a consistent and reliable trigger press. 
I'm not locking my elbows out, which will cause all of the force to go to the path of least resistance, which will be my wrists. I'm creating sort of a shock system. The gun still recoils, but it creates a pattern like this. It does sort of a circular motion. I engage these muscles right here and really engage my pinky. So with the little bit of muzzle flip I have, these act like a rubber band. I'm not trying to force the gun back down and it just naturally comes back into the line of sight because I've built a proper frame. All right, posture, the third thing in recoil control. It's about keeping that frame, keeping that upper body isolated, whether you're moving or standing still. So when you get into your athletic stance we discussed, your body is slightly forward bias anyway. However, we have the instinctual response that once we have an explosive at arm's length from our face, to kind of do that. You're bringing the gun up in front of your line of sight. The gun is not making its way into your line of sight and forcing you to do things. You're in control. You shoot guns. Guns don't shoot themselves, right? Stay erect and bring the gun up to your line of sight. If the target is on the ground, then move yourself more forward instead of the gun down and turtling your head. Turtling your head can cut off oxygen and make it more difficult to get consistent, accurate shots off. Angling your head forward like this also angles the retina of your eye forward like this. And the 15% of your retina that sees color and detail is then diminished by the amount of surface area that is reduced. So keep your eyes straight and your head straight. Bring the gun up to you. Stay erect, be able to breathe so you can stay relaxed here. Keep your trigger finger relaxed, keep your vision as clear as possible, and you will be able to deliver many more consistent results getting back on target much quicker. With all this in mind, I know shooting fast and flat and managing your recoil is exciting, but please focus the majority of your time on a nice, straight, consistent trigger press. It's going to deliver far more consistent results than any of the other things we've discussed. And besides, if you can align your sights and get everything perfect, but you mess it up with a trigger press that stinks, what does it matter? Watch that front sight. You can only shoot as fast as you can see. And learning to watch that front sight is crucial to being able to make any sort of the other things that we've just discussed beneficial on any level. Speed is just shooting accurately with smaller intervals between shots. So there is no conflict between speed and accuracy. If you're pulling that trigger fast and you're not hitting the target, you're still shooting slow. It just doesn't look or feel like it. But one final note, if you're with an instructor that just tells you to hold the gun in a way that feels natural, be cautious. What feels natural is actually not holding an explosion arm's length from your face. That's what feels natural, which produces a lot of weird bad habits when people are just getting into shooting. So pay attention to your fundamentals, dry fire a lot, build a good foundation, and keep adjusting. My grip is different this year than it was last year. Small nuanced things that no one else would notice but me. But I'm telling you, the more you shoot, the more you get used to whatever gun you've decided to commit to and train with and get good at, things will come to light as you put more time in. And that to me is the definition of technique or good technique, being able to self-diagnose and correct as you go. Again, I'm Sean Burrows. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will see you next time.